Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today, we're going to be talking about the newest album from Temples called Hot Motion. You know, this is the third time I've reviewed a Temples album. I've had the feeling that either everyone else is missing something in this experience, or it's just me and I'm maybe putting a band on a pedestal that doesn't really belong there. And that's a pretty rare thing for me to consider. Normally, I'm really confident when I praise an album that I can point to exactly everything that works so damn well, and I would like to say the same thing about Temples but it feels a little bit less tangible with this band, especially as I've come down pretty heavily on blatant retro throwbacks with oblique lyrics before. Normally my answer has been, well, the compositions here are so remarkably catchy and hook-driven to match a well-produced mix and some underrated songwriting, that's gotta be it. But really outside of specific songs, I don't tend to revisit Temple's albums in the same way I do other acts that I've praised to hell and back until I put together my year-end list and enjoyed them back to front all the way over again. And while a bunch of musicians tend to agree with that assessment of this band, a lot of critics really don't. Pretty consistently too, especially coming off their pop pivot with Volcano in 2017 that I love just about as much as their 2014 debut Sun Structures. So yes, I was setting myself up to adore this album and probably make many of the very same defenses, even if this time around it looks like the critical reception was harsher than ever. But you want screw all that. How was Hot Motion? Well, you know, this is the second time in 2019 where after two albums I would put among the best of their respective years, an act would default into a chunkier, more guitar-driven, garage-adjacent sound, and I wind up just being less interested as a whole. And sadly, just like with Kyle Craft and Showboat Honey, Hot Motion by Temples does feel like a pretty big step back for this band. And while the frontman has said that Volcano was driven by second-guessing what people wanted this band to deliver, and the increasingly dense melodic layers that were more synth driven, it's hard not to feel like Hot Motion is considerably more calculated and a lot less layered and deep across the board. In other words, well, I can still see much of the template that I've liked about Temples for the past couple of albums, Hot Motion feels a lot patchier, not so much leaner and heavier as it is just less of what made this band compelling. Still good, but not great, and nowhere close to what they've delivered in the past. In other words, yeah, I'm really kind of disappointed. And what's exasperating is that at the core, Temples haven't changed up their sound much at all, at least on the surface. Still a huge cavernous mix that allows for booming percussion, potent bass grooves, and frontman James Edward Bagshaw's voice to ride his multi-tracking and peel across the mix. All with the sort of vintage analog warmth and texture that sounds like it was yanked straight from late 60s psychedelic and garage rock, echoing out throughout the decades. And let me make this clear, I like this foundation. It's propulsive, it's rich, and textured, and it sets the table for the intricate, interweaving guitar and synth melodies that have always been this band's greatest strength. But while for some people they were skeptical of Temples' synth-pop pivot across Volcano, it's hard not to feel like the band has massively overcorrected here, centering increasingly chunky, distorted guitar lines at the forefront, with most of the nimble intricacy and interplay just outright gone. Dig a cut like The Howl, where there's a very stark, fuzzy guitar lead that remains as catchy as ever against the marching band cadence and the lockstep groove, but all the keyboards, all they bring in is backing texture and the occasional flourish, there's no interplay. So not only have you stripped out the brightest, most distinctive element of all your compositions, you're centering a distorted lead that carries less tune with that guitar timbre than in the annals of modern garage rock has become the go-to sound. It's just less unique. And that's not saying that Temples can't assemble a real hook regardless. That has always been their speciality. And a lot of this album, it remains irrepressibly catchy, but the tones that build it just have less flair or less color, not helped by the vocal melodies so closely matching the lead melody that's often carried in the guitar, and it makes these songs a lot easier compared to other bands in this retro-leaning subsection of rock. And when Temples has never been the most edgy or visceral or alien or blissful band in this set of psychedelic rock, you start looking for what makes them more compelling and unique, and this album starts coming up a little thin. Now again, Again, that's not saying that there aren't some great moments. The lead-off title track interweaves the bass of the lead guitar and the countdown pretty effectively before the crunchy lead manages to slide in. The percussive, melodic bombast of context it sounds like exactly the sort of spiky temple song I adore. It is probably the best song here. And then there's the shrill jauntiness to the beam and step
step down that wound up sounding pretty endearing and I dug the abrupt fuzzy change up cutting across atomize it's very much outside of the band's usual wheelhouse but it actually is pretty cool but on the flip side when you got a song like not quite the same that winds up just kind of meandering that only amps up the tension when the guitar line will just mimic and mirror the bass line or that weird flat melody behind it's all coming out where the guitar transition feels wonky as all hell probably the worst song here and that's not counting the moments that slide towards the dreamy listless side of psychedelic rock that's a little more acoustic and just not all that interesting and bagstraw's falsetto doesn't always hit as well as it should in that lane and you know what the low points here, they really stand out. For a band that is normally so compelling and so hook-driven, the fact that there is this many listless or forgettable moments is a problem. And then there's the lyrics. Now, again, I've given Temples far more credit than most in highlighting their self-awareness when it comes to their artistic process and the authority figures that they seem to regard with amusement and bemusement as they destroy themselves. Pretty much the main themes behind Volcano, and I really love the level of detail that Slinda painting an abstract but fascinating and layered picture. So when Hot Motion feels even more disconnected, yet seems to be retreading a lot of similar ground but with thinner writing as a whole, it can but get really distracting really fast especially when paired with the sort of pseudo-apocalyptic framing that I'm really starting to get sick of at, at this point. It's just getting played out. More to the point, starting to feel like more than a little detached from any sense of urgency in these songs, which is kind of ironic considering the biggest force that drives any sort of conflict on these songs, from the countdown, the title track, to the changing times on Not Quite the Same, to what seems like acceptance of the shift on Monuments, it is the inevitable passage of time. Hell, both the howl and step down, they seem like they're calling out that authority figure to quit playing the idiot and accept the dire consequences of incoming irrelevance and the band does seem self-aware enough to see how this could apply to them as well and it's all coming out but their observations of that creative impulse to work through it it feels less impactful it feels like we've been down this road before falling into the bliss of the moment rather than parsing through it more analytically most blatantly obvious with the bemused you're either on something and you know what here's the thing that is a part of psychedelic music that relax Relaxing into more creativity, letting it all flow out, man. So I'm not surprised to see that exchange and attunement of ideas described in Holy Horses and The Beam and Atomize, along with recognizing the give and take of artists and audience through the song on context. But I have to say it, one of the reasons that Temple stood out so much for me was the embrace of more studied meticulousness, bringing a focus that on this project rarely materializes in the same way lean to a much thinner and, I gotta be honest, less interesting listen. And that's kind of where I fall in hot motion as a whole. An overcorrection in the composition and a listening experience that just does not have the spark I've heard from them in the past. The hooks, they're not quite as vibrant. The meteor riffs, they aren't as dynamic. And when paired with writing that just isn't quite as impressive, the album has a feel of a rock-leaning pivot that just sacrifices some of what made Temple so special to me. Now, there are snippets I really like, to be sure, isolated songs. Songs. And I'm not really surprised that they did this after the very mixed reception of Volcano that I think is really unfair, but I am really disappointed they chose to go in this direction, which is why I'm giving it a light 7 out of 10 and a recommendation, but not nearly as much as their first two albums, which I recommend you check out instead. I can only hope things swing around from here, but I hope it's not based off of anything I or anyone else says. Maybe then the magic will come back. I don't know. We'll have to see. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I understand this review might be a little negative, and uh, folks, I really wanted to love this. I have loved temples when everyone else has not liked them, and yeah, this didn't really do it for me. But if you want to buy or stream it, link's down there below, and I got the poll up there for all you diehard fans to tell me what you think. Although I'm not sure you, the fans are liking this much either. I haven't seen requests for it. Beyond that, anything else I may be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And hey, if you guys are looking out for more reviews or that next episode of Billboard Breakdown, it's in the card right over there. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.